Greetings, Captains, and welcome to the start of Season 10 of Starfleet Command, Orion Pirates Plus Mod. That's right, it has been 10 long seasons, over an entire year since we first began this wonderful journey playing through all the factions in Starfleet Command, and now it is time to return to the one that started it all, the United Federation of Planets. I know I had said in previous episodes in the last season that I kind of wanted to save the Federation until after I had managed to change a couple of ships, but you know what? I am really eager to get back into the Federation. It's been over a year since we have played them, and we have learned so much since then. I really want to take what we've learned and try and play the Federation the way that it always should have been done, on Admiral Difficulty level. In this campaign, instead of going after the Klingon Empire, this time we are turning our attention to the Romulan Empire, which I do believe is probably the hardest campaign, since they have plasma torpedoes and we do not. However, to help even the odds just a little bit, I have changed just a few things for when we actually begin. So, without further ado, we shall set our skill level to Admiral, as we believe that we are skilled enough to pull this off, as well as the early era, so that we may experience all that Starfleet Command has to offer in terms of ships. And without further ado, begin the new campaign. Congratulations, Lieutenant Commander. You have earned your first command in Starfleet. We urge you to remember all that you have learned and consider that you are still in the process of learning. This will continue throughout the, the duration of your Starfleet career. As you gain experience, your prestige will increase. Prestige is used to pay for resupplying your vessel or bidding on a new ship. You will gain prestige by completing missions successfully. In whichever sector you find yourself, watch for available missions. Federation convoys often accompany vital supply freighters whose cargoes must arrive on time. In addition, vessels are constantly needed for patrol duty throughout our space. In the unfortunate case of a declared war between the Federation and its neighbors, you will be expected to guard our borders, protect our space, and engage the enemy while we negotiate a peaceful settlement or force the aggressor to surrender through the threat of Starfleet's power. And now we begin, once again, a brand new, completely open, empire-based campaign. Take a look at that map, for eventually all of this green will be blue, or at least gray. And as you can see, we are in the light cruiser USS Fokker. No, I didn't pick the name, so uh, somewhat lucky on that one. As uh, the light cruiser that we are going to be starting in, we have figured out a way to start in something other than the little tiny uh, frigate. So the options we had that we could have chosen were uh, the frigate that we're normally used to, a destroyer, the light cruiser like we have here, it's an FCL, uh, a heavy cruiser, or a dreadnought. I really thought long and hard about playing as the dreadnought, or not the dreadnought, but the heavy cruiser. It's a CAR, and it is, it's the original series model. It's, it's a gorgeous constitution class. I really, really wanted to do it, but I decided that would be just a little bit too much to just hand us a heavy cruiser. We have to have some era where we're just a little bit shaky on things, so instead we're going to step into the light cruiser mode as we head down to the southeast to take on the Romulans. So without further ado, let us set out into space our first patrol. I think I've said without further ado like three or four times already in this episode. But anyway, we are facing Romulan ships in our first mission, so hit that red alert, increase speed, let's find out just what this ship can do. Captain's Log, Stardate 2263.3. We are in deep space patrol. We are under orders to engage the enemy if encountered. If we should find ourselves heavily outnumbered, we are to disengage. Ah, yes, the Federation sounding very professional. And let's see just how fast we can go. We are actually capable of doing pretty decent speed, actually. Wow. Uh, this is, what, 17, 18 sp points of speed? Once again, in the absolute gorgeous Federation HUD. Gotta say, I think the Federation UI is the best UI. Although, our ship is probably the derpiest ship that we can possibly get. We are squaring off against a Romulan heavy cruiser. Oh, God. Um, let's, let's set up a wild weasel from long range. It is a KD-4, the Aatrox something, and it is indeed a Romulan vessel. You can tell by the paint job. It's got that bird motif, and if we could see underneath, we would see even more of a bird motif. So, this is gonna be interesting. Uh, the Romulans, of course, having he uh, plasma torpedoes, which outranges pretty considerably. Uh, we, however, have photon torpedoes. When I say outrange, I meant outgun, not outrange. We definitely outrange him. So, on setting 1, we have phasers. On setting 2, we have photon torpedoes. We're going to set to proximity mode now, and uh, immediately open fire just as soon as we can. I believe our maximum range is 50? Yep, already says that we can't hit. Unfortunately, he is currently jamming us, so we're going to counter go against his electronic warfare so that we can get accurate fire off. Photon torpedoes are especially vulnerable to uh, electronic warfare, so we have to keep that in mind whenever we get into a fight. Uh, we're not going to need our own defenses right away, mainly because, well, we're going to be operating from extreme range. So open fire, the first shots of the campaign. Two photon torpedoes soaring off towards the target. One hit, all right. 
So let's now turn off and also increase speed since we have speed. We do have our first decoy shuttle. It will be very useful. And this is as fast as, oh, no, we can go a little bit slower. There we go. This appears to be as fast as we can go. However, that will be enough range to keep on long at him. And we also get a nice little beauty shot of our ship. I say beauty shot, let's let's be 100% honest. The Federation CL is pretty ugly. Uh, there's There's not much you can say about that except it's true. Since he is not countering our jamming, we're going to switch over to a single point of electronic countermeasures. If he again tries to jam us, we will swap over. We are going faster than he can go, so we're just going to open up the range and wait for things to happen. He is getting shots off on us, so we're going to set the stern shield to the reinforcement level that we can actually manage. And yeah, as long as he keeps this up, we can outrange him. And we're just going to steadily plink away, cause a little bit of damage, weaken his shields up just a little bit until we get a good opportunity to engage and hopefully get around the back of him. I am really worried about what sort of plasma torpedoes he's going to get involved with. So, photon torpedoes are about to come back online, so let's come around real quick. They do have a very narrow firing arc. As you can see here, it's front 90 only, so we're going to have to be a little bit cognizant of that. Uh, it makes it so we can't just do broadside shelling. Although, I do believe there is the fire support ship, which is indeed capable of firing uh, at 90 degrees. Two more photon torpedoes, one more hit which, you know, is actually pretty pretty good so far. I think we have a 30% chance to hit from this range. We're going to, again, bring out the range. I believe he'll probably have SDI plasma torpedoes. We could find out. Although I'm going to wait just a little bit before we do. Uh, according to engines, we are putting 0.5 points of energy into our stern shields, and we have one point of electronic countermeasures going on, which should be helpful. And again, we also have a single shuttle in the bay, ready to launch should we suddenly find ourselves in the worst of situations and suddenly being attacked by multiple plasma torpedoes. Our phaser complement is actually pretty good. If you take a look at the whole boat, uh, we've got two photon torpedoes, six phaser ones, and two phaser threes for point defense. The phaser threes have 180 degree arcs on them, which gives us pretty decent coverage all around. It's not the best anti-missile defense system, but against Klingons, especially in the early era, it's going to be more than enough to do what we need to do. We then bust out with uh, these two phasers, two of them, or is that four? Oh, wow, it's two on each mount, so four mounts uh, here that have 180 degrees, and then this mount, which is just huge. It's absolutely gigantic. So we're going to, again, turn on in here. We've gotten ourselves back out into range. Photon torpedoes are again selected. We'll prepare for another plinking shot. Again, we're not trying to get too heavily involved with this. I do want to kill this heavy cruiser. And we're not going to do that if we just sort of wade into the fire. So two more photon torpedo shots. One more hit once again. And we're going to again move to draw the range out. As long as we can keep outside of his range, we should be just okay. Quick check of the map here. All right, we are going to have to start maneuvering around the corners here. Otherwise, we are going to find ourselves off the map. And that would not be good. Uh, we are still moving away from him. He doesn't have enough speed to catch up to us. Although that's going to change. I believe he'll make a speed of 22. Is what I want to believe, but I could be wrong on that. Don't think that I am, though. So, again, waiting for him to chug up to... Oh, no, he is going to go faster, so we were wrong on that. However, we are maintaining a speed of 26, so which is higher than that, and we are still opening the range despite the uh, current course change. So, again, waiting for the photon torpedoes to recharge. That's, that's our main ace in the hole. These photon torpedoes always fire out and do consistent damage. So, if you're brand new to the series, welcome. You've picked a great place to come in because, one, everybody knows the Federation. And, two, well, we're much better at this than we were back in the original Season 1. <laughs> so, the Photon Torpedo is the Federation's primary heavy weapon, and it is an extremely flexible weapon. Uh, when fired in normal mode, a Photon Torpedo will do 8 damage. 8 damage is mediocre. It's not fantastic. It's not going to seem to immediately annihilate any sort of ship. And we now have decent view on what he's got. He's got twin Gs. Okay, that's much less dangerous than I thought. The photon torpedo isn't going to utterly annihilate a ship in one shot. But eight damage consistently fired is pretty good. Uh, it'll do that It'll do that reasonably accurately out to a range of about eight. Uh, however, once you start getting beyond that range, the photon torpedo really drops off in accuracy. But no matter what the range is, it will always deal that eight damage. Now, we can change the firing mode a little bit in order to make ourselves more flexible. If we find ourselves doing what we're doing right here, long-range plinking, just sort of skirmishing with them so that we can get a little bit of an advantage before we actually get involved in the fight, uh, we'll set our photon torpedoes to proximity mode. In proximity mode, the photon torpedo will fly out, get relatively close to the target, and then explode. However, because it's not going for a direct hit anymore, it's not going to deal as much damage, and it'll only deal four damage a shot. So proximity, four, normal, eight. 
However, if we find ourselves getting right on top of the enemy at point-blank range, we can overload our photon torpedoes, and overloading the photon torpedoes doubles the damage, up to 16 points of damage, which is really nice. It's still not plasma torpedo firepower, but it's a nice amount of firepower, and he's doing a little bit of a juke right here. We're just going to try and get a shot in with the photon torpedoes before he gets too close, and there's a shot. Two more photon torpedoes, right on into him, both hits. That's the equivalent of a full photon torpedo hitting him. Again, that may not seem like huge damage, but over time, this adds up pretty quick, and the fact that it doesn't cost us am any ammunition to do this, and we will always do the, the damage out until our maximum range, means we can do really well here. And the Federation is probably the most flexible of the races, simply because the photon torpedo can be used in one of three different ways, and all three can be very efficient. I know it might seem a little bit boring, however, this is an important tactic to sort of get down, and I'm kind of using this as a practice run. Because we are in a light cruiser and he's in a heavy cruiser, if we just soared right into him, look at his firepower. He's got two G-type plasma torpedoes and then six more phasers. He, more than, he equals our phaser one complement, and then these plasma torpedoes each do 20 damage apiece, and they're homing weapons, which means when they fire, they will continue to track towards us and will not miss. Our only advantage is the fact that the plasma torpedo is relatively short-ranged. Uh, it'll slowly degrade over time as it travels out, until eventually it just fades entirely. Whereas our photon torpedo? Essentially infinite range. Not quite. Our photon torpedo has a maximum range of 50 when fired in proximity mode. However, that is well beyond any sort of range that he can handle. Uh, of the plasma torpedoes, so know your enemy. Uh, ooh, another two good hits. That's nice. Good work, fire control. Of the plasma torpedoes, there are multiple kinds. The smallest of the plasma torpedoes is the Plasma F. It deals 20 damage, and it'll deal that damage out to a range of about 10. So as you can see, we're currently at a range of 13 and traveling away from him. The plasma torpedo travels at a, rate, at a speed of, I believe, 36, which means it'll eventually catch up to you. However, if he had pl uh, Plasma Fs and were to fire at them, they would dissipate to nothing by the time they made it to us. The next step up is the Plasma Torpedo G. Now this is just an extended range Plasma Torpedo. It still deals the same 20 damage as the F-type Plasma Torpedo, but it'll do that further out. The, the blast that it creates is more, co more coherent and will last longer. And uh, we need to adjust course so that we don't fly off the map. Oh, no, we need to go this way, I think. Let's, yeah, this way. I think. This is us, right? Yes, okay. And yeah, he's starting to get squirrely because the edge of the map, and the AI does not like the edge of the map. Uh, so yeah, the G-type plasma torpedo, it's basically a plasma F, except it'll fly further. And for longer. It's a very nice weapon, actually. Uh, however, some people would argue that the F is better, because the F, once it's fully charged, doesn't cost any power to hold. The next time size up is the S-type plasma torpedo. Uh, the S-type plasma torpedo will deal 30 damage. It's a very nice heavy cruiser to plasma torpedo and uh, it can deal a lot really quickly, especially because it generally comes in pairs. Uh, the S-type plasma torpedo uh, is the mainstay for a lot of ships. Seriously, it's a heavy cruiser plasma torpedo. And then finally, there's the R-type plasma torpedo. This has the furthest range. It costs the most power to charge, but it deals 50 damage when it hits. Plasma R torpedoes will utterly wreck the face of anybody who's stupid enough to get hit by them. And when I say stupid enough, I mean the captain placed them in a position where they couldn't do anything against it. Now the downside to these plasma torpedoes, aside from their relatively limited range compared to our photon torpedoes, is they're vulnerable to being spoofed by a shuttle called a Wild Weasel. Now, a Wild Weasel sh decoy shuttle basically goes out and mimics all the emissions that our ship is currently giving off. It makes it seem, at least to sensors, like that's the real ship. And so if he fires his plasma torpedoes, we can dump a wild weasel out of the shuttle bay and start having it travel away from us. And the enemy sensors will detect that as our ship, believe that is the real ship, and the plasma torpedo will instead fly harmlessly into it. Uh, the problem is, we only have a few of those, and once we're out, we're out. Oh, we got his forward shields down. Nice. He has two phaser ones and four phaser twos. Okay. And this is the advantage of what we've been doing here. We now have accurate intelligence as to what he is equipped with. We've managed to strip away his forward shield, which is his most powerful shield. And we know, and we've been staying outside of his range pretty much this whole time. 
we could actually probably start getting a little bit more aggressive here. I'm going to stay stay more defensive because all it's going to take is one bad angle shot on us in order for these G-type plasma torpedoes to utterly decimate us. But we're actually in a really good position at this point. We have steadily worked his shields down until he basically doesn't have anything left. And this, this is a pretty common Federation tactic. If you're fighting an enemy who's superior to you, well, you have superior range, take advantage of it. We've basically told him he's no longer allowed to face directly towards us without taking a couple of photon torpedoes to the face. Now, he is still recovering shields. That is something he can still do. However, that forward shield is still extremely weak and it's probably only going to take one photon torpedo to take it down. So we are coming in here and get the two photon torpedoes off. Two more good hits and there's the plasma torpedoes. Let's start pulling away. He also demanded a cloak. We're going to dump the wild weasel. I didn't think I could get away in time, so immediately our ship went to an emergency stop so that we stopped all emissions and dumped out the Wild Weasel, and as you saw, the plasma torpedoes went right for it. However, we are now in a gr an aggressive position. I'm going to set the forward reinforcement now for the shields, all weapons select, and we're going to charge right on into them. We've got a whole bunch of phasers that we can do a lot of damage with, but we are going to have to be careful because he is cloaked and he's traveling under a speed of 4. If he was traveling over a speed of 4, we would be able to hit him with mines, which would force him to decloak temporarily. However, because he's not doing that, we're just going to have to maneuver around behind him and stay there. We do not have any more Wild Weasels, which puts us in a relatively dangerous position, because all he needs is one good angle shot on us, and we're in a lot of trouble. So we're steadily going to come around. We are a light cruiser, which means we're more maneuverable than he is, although he is a Klingon heavy cruiser. Now, I may need to unpack that for a few people. If you're new to the series, if you're new to this era of Star Trek, the Klingons and the Romulans basically made a peace treaty, or a secret alliance, mainly against the Federation. And what they traded was the Romulans gave the Klingons cloaking devices, and the Klingons gave the Romulans ship designs, power, power specs, and the like. So this is actually a Klingon heavy cruiser, which has been modified for Romulan use. And in doing that, it has plasma torpedoes, which makes it very strong. However, it also maintains the physical characteristics of a Klingon heavy cruiser. Klingon ships are nicknamed the Sharks of Space. They are highly maneuverable vessels. And so, uh, we need to quickly set our photon torpedoes to normal. Uh, and so, a Klingon ship generally can be more maneuverable than just about anything else you've got. However, we are an entire tier of ships smaller than he is, so we might be able to take advantage of this. So he is decloaking, we'll fire everything we got into him, blasted him for 9 points of damage, missed one of our photon torpedoes, we're basically right on top of him, and our starboard side weapons weren't able to engage because of the current angle. We're going to increase speed, stay here as best as we can, and just try and avoid that front. In fact, I'm going to see if I can't call on the marines. Kill this, kill this, and we did take a couple of hits on through, however, I'm going to accept that as... Decent casualties of war. Let's get to the repair teams. Make sure things stay on, stay active, because if he comes around enough, we're screwed. So I need more power. I need more energy. Uh, we're currently... Sh oh, no, that's an anchor. Okay, we're about to get hit by a big, big plasma torpedo. All stop, all stop. All power to the forward shields. This is... Yup. Oh, that was, that was painful. I had forgotten about that tactic, if I'm 100% honest. Let's increase speed, and let's see what we need to fix. Well, first of all, we're only one point of energy down, and we've only lost a single phase of three, which is not as bad as it could have been. We got out of that exchange relatively lightly, especially compared to him. And he's gone back into his cloak. He's going to stay there so we can recharge his plasma torpedoes, whereas we are just going to sit here and bombard him. We're not going to deal a lot of damage here. We can't because our targeting systems don't have an accurate read on him. However, we're going to do enough damage to steadily work him over. We're, we need to get right back around so that we're facing towards him. Let's give a phaser fire. Uh, nothing quite accurate just yet. We're just going to get right on his stern and cause as much damage. Now we need to be prepared for that tactic again. So we're going to set a tractor beam to repel mode. And what that's going to do is set our tractor beam up to push back against his tractor beam. To overload it so it can't hold on to us. And by doing that, hopefully we'll avoid what he just did, which is called a plasma anchor. You basically lock a, a tractor beam onto the enemy target. They can't move, they can't turn away, and they can't, most importantly, dump a wild weasel. If we had had a wild weasel and he had tried that, we could have dumped it if he didn't have us in a tractor lock. But because he locked us onto his tractor beams, he was able to cause a pretty decent amount of damage. We have cut through his stern shields, and you know what? I'm going to take this shot with photon torpedoes. We got another good hit in there with the photon torpedoes. So by staying at point blank range here, we're not going to deal a ton of damage, but we could deal enough damage to kill him. 
as long as he stays under, we're just taking free turns to shoot at him. It takes him three turns to recharge those plasma torpedoes. It takes us one turn to cycle our phasers. So that's what we're pretty much banking on. It, it takes us two turns to charge our photon torpedoes, though. And he's coming out of cloak again. We're about to be ready with another phaser barrage. We're going to have to wait just a little bit. Fire as soon as you can. And we've just sent our hit and run teams over and they knocked out one of his G-type plasma torpedoes. Now, a special thing to note about plasma torpedoes is even though you've destroyed them, the plasma torpedo itself is still coherent inside the launcher. Now, he's going to have two G-type plasma torpedoes for a short period of time until it actually dissipates and disappears. So we need to stay away from his front here, cause a little bit more damage, and hopefully our hit and run teams can wipe out the last of what he's got here. But as long as we maneuver right behind him, we should be safe. Now we also are currently buffing up. We've got a level one tractor beam. All right, we got the second one. He's tractor beamed over, but he's realized there's no point and our propel tractor activated. So we're holding him off. He's not able to get a good anchor. And he's lost both of his plasma torpedoes. So now we're in a commanding position. Let's increase speed. How are we doing on energy consumption? Uh, we're currently eating up more power than we have. That's not good. That means we're not able to char charge all of our weapon systems. However, I want the maneuverability advantage that we're currently afforded by this. We may have to reverse to the other side. However, as you can see on the damage table over here, he doesn't have a lot left. He's down to a single phaser 2 and two phaser 1s. Both of his plasma torpedoes are out. And we are exposing a shield to him, but he doesn't really have much to exploit that with until now he's turned around. His pl yep, his plasma 2, or his phaser 2 got in through that. We're going to start... Uh, actually, no, we're not going to bother with repairs just yet. He hasn't hit anything important. That's the key thing here. Uh, if you look, we're still at our maximum power of 30. And we still are. Which means the belt armor is holding up pretty well. Uh, what they want to repair here with this active engine is basically labs and other auxiliary systems. And he's out of equipment at this point. He's done for. Doesn't have a shuttle bay. Doesn't have any weapon systems. We got him dead to rights. Uh, and we only have three repair parts, so I don't really want to risk too much. So, uh, this, this repair option is if there's other auxiliary systems, like laboratories. Now, one of the things laboratories are used, even though you can't really see them on the ship, is they're used to regenerate downed shields. And, as you can see, we have a downed shield and a weakened shields over here that can increase in power. And we'll have both photon torpedoes ready for this. And one hit, one miss, followed with the phasers, cause a lot of damage there. And as you can see, he's a burning wreck at this point. He's lost his tractor beam. He still has his transporter, but that's not much. And he's down to electronic warfare and transporters at this point. He could start beaming mines out at me, which I am anticipating him doing shortly. But other than that, he's down to a speed of 2.5. He's vulnerable and an easy kill at this point. And the reason why this was able to happen is because we kept him at range early on. We used our photon torpedoes to the greatest advantage they could grant us. And it allowed us to basically pick apart a Romulan heavy cruiser with a Federation light cruiser. And that is the way that this game is meant to be played. So I do believe that this phaser pass is going to be the last pass. I don't think he's going to survive it. He doesn't have a whole lot of systems to survive the overload. So we're just going to get nice and close to him and hit him with all the phasers that we've got for the final classic Federation firing pass. And took him down. As the USS Fokker soars through the remains of the Romulan heavy cruiser. The first shots have been fired in this war, and they have said that the Federation is nobody's fool. 302 prestige is a reward for that. We are going to need a little bit of a patchwork, so we're going to head right back on here, come into the supply yard, and fix the ship. Also, because we're fighting Romulans in this campaign, we're going to have to stay up to date on shuttles. We can't ever run too low on them. The Marines proved themselves to be incredibly useful in that battle. The hit and run teams went over and knocked out his plasma torpedoes, and that was the point where we basically had him dead to rights. Spare parts are always useful to have, but we're going to try and keep a little bit on the side of not spending too much, because we do want to save up enough cash to buy a heavy cruiser relatively shortly. And as you can see, there are a decent number of ships available already. Unfortunately, I'm not... Oh, there's... That's what we want. This is a Federation Command Cruiser. If I've seen... No... The CC Plus is not online just yet, but this is basically what we're looking for. Uh, one of the other options that we could have picked was the CAR Heavy Cruiser. This is actually a starter ship option that you can take. However, we decided th that was a little bit too much. But this is what we're currently saving up for. We're going to need about 1,800 prestige for that, which will take a couple of missions. And if they all continue like that, it's going to take us a while. But that's going to be where we're going to end today's episode. I've been Turek. If you like what you've been seeing, hit that like button and subscribe. If you want to receive a notification every time I release one of these videos, press that little bell icon, leave a comment, and I will see you all 
in the next episode.